Hello everyone, I'm Yi Lu from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. I want to introduce our paper, Adversarial Separation and Adaptation Network for Far Field Speaker Verification. Here is the outline of my presentation. Our work focuses on addressing the domain mismatch problem. We propose to apply domain separation network and adversarial separation and adaptation network to achieve the domain adaptation. To further improve the performance, we propose to incorporate the mutual information neural estimator, which can help to retain more speaker discriminative information. Nowadays, speaker verification systems are highly optimized on the near field microphone speech. However, these um, systems may perform poorly when evaluated on far field microphone speech. Because of the domain mismatch caused by different characteristics of microphones, it is hard to retrain the systems by collecting more data of far field microphone speech because it is time consuming and computationally expensive. Therefore, we need domain adaptation methods to address the domain mismatch issue. Traditionally, we train different systems using different training data, and the trained systems can work well only on the data set that have same or similar distributions with the training data. However, for domain adaptation, we want to learn the shared knowledge from some distributions and the system trained using the shared knowledge can also work well on other dis different distributions. In speaker recognition, we can reduce the domain mismatch when training the speaker embedding networks, or we can transform the speaker embeddings to domain environment space. In this paper, we achieve the domain adaptation by the means of transformation. Our idea is based on the domain separation network. It consists of three encoders, a decoder and a classifier. There are two private encoders that try to extract the domain specific components. Another shared encoder tries to extract the domain environment components, or we can say the shared features. We have two domains, the source domain and the target domain. The source domain has labels while the target domain does not have any label. The shared features of the source domain from the shared encoder will be input to the, dis uh, the classifier to ensure that they are speaker discriminative. The private features and the shared features from the same domain will be forced to be different by making them to be orthogonal to each other. The shared features from um, different domains will be ensure to be similar by using some distance measurements such as JS divergence or MMD. And in addition, the decoder here can ensure that the extracted feature can maintain some useful information from the original, original data. As a whole, the domain separation network can distangle the domain environment components from the domain specific components. Based on the idea of the domain separation network, we propose a network named as adversarial separation and adaptation network. The main difference between it and the domain separation network is that we use the separation discriminator to ensure the differences between the outputs of encoders. If the input mm, is from the shared encoder, then it will be labeled as one. And if it is from the source encoder, it will be labeled as two. And for the input from the target encoder, it will be labeled to three. We also use the speaker discriminator and the decoder to ensure the shared features have speaker information. Also, we apply adversarial learning between the adaptation discriminator and shared encoder to make the shared features from different domains to be indistinguishable. Therefore, the minimax optimization can be summarized as this. We send some parameters here to control the influences of different losses. The, the adaptation discriminator tries to distinguish whether the shared features from the source domain or from the target domain. But the shared encoder is trained to the opposite direction to make the adaptation discriminator could not distinguish the shared features so that we can obtain the domain environment features. 
One potential risk of these models is that the features produced by the shear encoder may not contain enough task-related information. And in our case, it's the speaker information. This would happen especially when the decoder is flexible enough. However, this can be addressed by maximizing the mutual information between the encoder's input and the outputs of the encoder. Traditional approaches are non-parametric or rely on the approximate causality of data distribution. These approaches can now scale well with sample size or dimension. The mutual information neuroestimator proposed by Benghazi can help to address these issues. The main idea is that the mutual information can be computed through the KL divergence between the joint distribution and the product of the marginal distributions of two variables. And the KL divergence admits this dual representation. The larger the divergence between the joint and the product of the margin, the stronger dependence between X and Z. We apply the mutual information neural estimator to our network by using it to compute the mutual information between the input and the output of the shared encoder. However, since it is a neural network, it needs to be trained first before we use it as an estimator to get the approximate mutual information. In our experiment, mine is trained first to get converged by using the source data according to this loss function. Then it will be frozen when training the adaptation network. When training the adaptation network, it will be used to approximate the mutual information between the source data XS and its corresponding source Latin vectors DHS and the mutual information between target data XT and its corresponding Latin vectors. The shared encoder is trained to maximize the mutual information. Mm, and the optimization of the whole network come like this. Sigma 1 and 2 here are assigned to control the different contributions of mutual information from the source domain and the target domain. And every epoch after training the adaptation networks, the estimator will be updated again to achieve better approximation. We can obtain the joint distribution by finding its, uh, the input and its corresponding output from the encoder to the estimator. And the product of marginal distribution can be obtained by feeding the input and the shuffle output from the encoder to the estimator. After we input all the required vectors to the estimator, it will output the approximate mutual information according to this equation. So then I would like to talk about our experiments and results. We use the combination of work step one and two and their augmented sets to train an um, X-vector extractor. Then we selected the cleanest alternatives from the original work step one and two with the help of signal to noise ratios. The reason of doing this is that the number of alternances per speaker ranges from 20 to 500, which may cause imbalanced training in the speaker discriminator. The selected alternances were then used as a source domain to train the adaptation network, while the target domain is a voice the challenge 2019 development set. Then we evaluated the performance on both the development and evaluation set from the voices. The SNRs are estimated using the waveform amplitude distribution analysis. The authors define the shaping parameter by this formula and argue that this shaping parameter characterizes the amplitude distribution of noisy speech, and it can be applied to uniquely determine SNRs which means that one parameter corresponds um, to one SNR value. Therefore, we can calculate the shaping parameter of any input speech and find its corresponding SNR through a pre-computed table. After selection, the mean SNR also becomes larger, which helps to aggregate, aggravate the mismatch between the source 
and target domain. So we can make the results more meaningful. After the adaptation networks are well trained, we use them to transform the X vectors and then use PLDA for scoring. Before training the PLDA, we pre-process the vectors to a 200-dimensional space by linear discriminant analysis followed by length normalization. And the vectors were centered using the mean vector of the enrollment data from the development set of voices. Our experiments were on the two situations. The first one is that we only use the embeddings from the original work celebrate data set to train the PLDA. And another is to use the embeddings from both the work celeb and their augmented set. For the development set, the performance can be improved a little. Our goal is to make the results located, to be located in the left corner, which means the best result lower ER and lower mean DCF. However, we can only improve this ER slightly um, by using the ADSAN with mine. But for the evaluation set, the performance, the performance is much better. The lowest ER can be obtained by using the domain separation network with mine, and the lowest mean DCF can be obtained by using our proposed ADSAN with mine. The reason that the performance on evaluation set is much better may be because the domain mismatch between work setup and versus evaluation set is more severe. For visualization, we plot the embeddings using the TSNE tool. It can be found that with mine, the transform vectors can retain more speaker information. You can see here, the clusters are much clearer than this one and the distributions of the target domains are closer to the source domain when compared with this graph. Then for the domain separation network with mine, it seems that the distance between the domains are much closer, but the distributions are totally different. Now we can draw some conclusions that the domain separation network and the adversarial separation and adaptation network can enforce the shear encoder to distangle the domain environment features from the domain specific properties, which help to address the domain mismatch problem. The distributions of ADSAN transform vectors are closer to the distributions of the original data, original vectors. Training the networks with the consideration of mutual information can further increase the speaker information in the extracted features. That's all of my presentation. Thanks for listening.